Chris Fowler here on the Rich Eisen Show. And then the Rose Bowl, which is going to be Urban Palooza. I, I imagine every single Buckeye on planet Earth that is free to come to the Los Angeles <laughs> area for the Rose Bowl will be here for Urban Meyer's last game. What, what are you hearing about uh, that and, and the preparations around it? Yeah, I was Chris. in Columbus this week. Interesting, good, good, long sit down with Urban, covered a variety of topics over the years. And, and I, obviously, his excitement about being at the Rose Bowl. No one in his staff has ever been in the Rose Bowl. He's ever been in the stadium. He, really? He was recruiting in Southern California, cruised by Pasadena, stood on the outside. It was locked that they wouldn't let him in. And he just checked it out from the parking lot. That's the closest he's been to the Rose Bowl. So he's asking a bunch of questions about it. None of his players have been there. It's weird if you think about Ohio State and all the decades of history in the Rose Bowl, and it seemed like they were there every year in the 70s and, and part of the 80s. They've only been three times in 25 years. Think about that. And part of it is they've been in – They've been in the BCS games, and they've been in the the playoff in years when they would have played in the Rose Bowl as Big Ten champs, but it's just been that long. So, yeah, you're right. It's going to be a, a convention of the Buckeye Nation out there, I think, because of the fact that it's been a while and because it's it's their last chance to you know, salute or admire. Yeah, if you had told me a uh, quarter century ago that uh, Ohio State would only make the next three uh, Rose Bowls, I would have said, well, I don't know how many times they lose to Michigan is what I would have said. Um, but uh, we all know that's a different <laughs> ball of wax. Uh, do you think Urban's done coaching deep down, hard of hearts, Chris? Oh, man, um, good question. I think he does, but things change. Uh, we talked a lot about that. I said, you know, people are just not going to believe that at 54, when you're out of this for a while, when your health issues, and they're significant, when they calm down if the stress drops, that you're not going to believe that you can manage that and get back in. And he says he thinks he's done. He's got some plans. Um, when, when the doctors use the word risk, Rich, that changed it for him. Now it's not just enduring the pain. And he was in a lot of pain at times. Those headaches were real. He was just, he was in anguish. He looked uh, really uncomfortable. There was a very little enjoyment in some of those games for him this, this fall because he was dealing with that stuff. But if it calms down, it's stress going away in his life um, makes him feel better, then who knows? But I think that he's very mindful of his legacy at Ohio State. And I think if he came back and coached in four years at USC or somewhere in the NFL, right. eh, it would bother people, just like it really bothered Florida fans. So if he's mindful of that, he's going to stick around in Columbus. I think he's going to teach a class. He's going to be involved in, in the university and some goodwill ambassador stuff. And he says he wants to be around the players every day. I said, well, that'll be interesting. He's going to be in the building. I said, well, stay out of the way of the next head coach. He said, no, I will. I will. So he, he has high regard for Ryan Day, but it's going to be very, very rough first year out of football coaching for him. I so bet. Same way I was for Bob Stoops and other guys. I well, bet. I bet. I bet. And then, uh, um, you know, I might as well just continue speculating here. When you said NFL, uh, I think deep down he's on the craft radar screen for whenever Belichick wants to end. And if McDaniels isn't there, that that's, that's the play. I really do. Deep down. How do you follow Belichick, though, while trying to, and he admits this is tough for him, dial back the intensity 5%? Maybe. He, I don't he know. He only knows one way. That's, that's been the problem, Richie. Urban only knows one way. He can't be a CEO. He can't let others run the show. He focuses on just a few things. That's just not, it's not possible for him. Well, you tell me. In the NFL and even, I mean, you don't have to recruit. So right. Maybe it's a little bit less 12 months, but is, is it any less intense? I, don't, no. I can't imagine. No, it, it, it's not. But, I mean, every single coach that I've worked with, and I'm sure you have too, Chris, they can't get out of their system ever, 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 ever. They they don't miss the losing. They don't. And then as they get older, the the excitement of winning, that emotional high is not nearly as intense as the depression over losing. Um, but they can't get out of their system. No, and TV doesn't give you that. I mean, Urban did TV. He may do TV again. He's good he at it. Teach a class, but I ask him. I said, "Where is the fulfillment and the deep, you know, satisfaction going to come? Where, where's the juice going to come from?" And he, I don't know. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.